Okay, let's have a look at some uh, mixer functionality. Uh, first of all, we're going to select our first kick drum and solo it. And whilst that's playing, let's just have a look at a few of the other controls on the interface. And you can see that I'm looking at the mixer here at the top. And on the left hand side, we have some buttons which enable us to view different sets of channels and channel configurations. Uh, for example, the auxiliary sense and things of this nature, but we'll ignore those for now. And I'm just going to use the right click on the mouse here to uh, select a channel EQ. And whilst um, clicking and dragging on the EQ curve with the mouse, I can um, choose and select my frequency and gain instead of using the controls at the top. If I hold down the uh, Alt key on the keyboard, I can also, as you've just seen, uh, adjust the cue of. And I'm just going to do that again here, and hold down Alt, and there I am adjusting the cue, which is a great way of very simply drawing in the EQ curves that you like. Now I'm going to copy the channel, and I'm going to paste it into the next kick output along, which is the kick out channel. And as you can see, I've just copied the channel and doing a paste and that's copied my EQ settings across for us to save time. Uh, I'm going to now continue the little process, just go back to our main kick input channel and I'm going to add another effect. In this case I'm going to add a, a channel compressor. And I'm just going to turn up the input gain a little bit, uh, just the release time and the attack taste. Very quick and rough and ready here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy that channel and paste it into the next one across. And as you can hear now, we have a uh, EQ'd and compressed kick drum. And I'm just going to take these out of solo and listen to uh, everything back in the context. I'm going to do the same process again, but in a slightly different fashion. This way we're going to create uh, some auxiliary channels and bust the outputs from the kick drum into it. Uh, so whilst holding down shift, select my two bass drum channels by clicking on them. And then whilst holding down alt on the keyboard, click on auxiliary plus, we'll create an auxiliary channel as we can see and I'm just going to repeat the process of adding a EQ and compressor in very quickly and you'll notice that obviously this uses half the amount of DSP as the previous time we did this because we're only having one compressor and one EQ instead of two of each. Obviously this technique won't work for every single drum sound you want to try and create because sometimes you will want to EQ uh, channels differently but it's a great way of getting um, drum sounds together quickly and with a low CPU usage. Okay, I'm just going to carry on creating more auxiliary channels for the rest of the kit in the same manner. So select my snares and select my toms and finally select my cymbals. You can also name uh, the channels as well, which is uh, an easy way of keeping track of where everything's going. So I'm going to name these kicks. Auxiliary 2, which is my snares, will be called snares and toms for auxiliary 3 and finally my cymbals on auxiliary 4. Another feature of the interface is the ability to uh, group channels together to um, adjust them at once. And uh, I'll demonstrate this very quickly by uh, showing you how to do it with snares. So if we uh, shift select the three snare channels and then hold down the alt key and you'll see I can move all the snares together. Now what I'm going to do now is uh, sort of show you how to get together uh, a basic mix. So I'm going to group all of the faders together and now we'll reduce them all to 0 dB, which is a good place to start when you're doing any kind of mixing. And I will, um, whoops, uh, didn't want to move my channels around. And I will um, start with the bass drums and go all the way through and just getting a, a quick overall sound together. Okay, so let's bring up my bass drum and I also need to turn up its auxiliary channel so that um, we can hear it. And there we go, and I'll just turn up the other auxiliary channels for the rest of the kit whilst I'm here. The toms and the cymbals. And now bring up the outside kick microphone and start to put a snare sound together. And we've got uh, three microphone channels for the snare. We have a, a condenser and a dynamic on the top, which is a snare top one and snare top two, and obviously the snare bottom, which is a condenser as well. Um, so between the three mics, we've got a huge variety of different snare sounds available. But I'm just going to treat this in a very basic way, a little bit top end, a little bit of compression. Okay, I think we're that's about right for that. Now bring the hi-hat up, pan it off the 
center just a touch. Add some EQ to roll off the, the bass end in it. And I'm uh, gonna use one of the uh, filters here. And as you can see, we've got a, a low pass, which will take away all the top end, and a high pass, which I'm gonna use to take away some of the bass end in the hi-hat. Um, I think that's about right. Um, now just gonna scroll across and uh, bring the overheads into the play. And uh, as you can see, in comes some of the room. You can hear rather. And just pull uh, my room channels back in on there a second. I'm gonna add a bit of EQ, some more top end here. Really accentuate the, the hi-hats at the top of the snare. A bit of bus compression to add a little bit of uh, sustain to the sound. Uh, slow attack, fast release, a little bit of sidechain high pass to uh, remove some of the bass end in the uh, sidechain signal, which is the signal actually used to drive the compressor. And I'm going to do a little bit of parallel compression here using the mix control. And I'm um, just going to go to the kit piece inspector now and uh, do a few tweaks. Uh, going to remove the hi-hats from the room microphones and most of the overheads. Just leave a touch in for flavour and I'm going to turn off the bleeds for it. This will help crispen it up and tighten it all up. And I'm going to do the same for the kick drum as well. Um, and I'm going to also remove the snare bleed. And there we go, you can see how much of a difference that makes. Really tightens and controls the bass drum. Okay, a little bit of the far ambient microphones. These are the very far ones and a little bit of the room microphones as well. And there we go, you can hear the snare really working with those well. Just back to taste. And I'm going to make the room microphones mono. So we just hit the uh, room width controls there. And I think I need a little bit more of the bass drum in the room as well. There we go. Okay, so our drum sound's just about finished, I think. Let's just um, have a listen to the room microphones. And these are the far room mics, the ones very high up in the sky. And this is the much closer uh, mid-side pair. You can obviously hear the quite dramatic tonal difference between the two channels there. And I think we're just going to uh, put a bit of bus compression. And I think we'll put a bit of distortion in front of that. Dirty up a little bit. Uh, remove some of the top end a touch and some of the low frequencies. Far too distorted. Remove the clean signal. But, uh, let's just see how that sits. Obviously, that's too distorted. So just tame it down a little bit. And I think that's getting close. So the final thing to do is put uh, some bus compression over the master outputs. And uh, not the channel compressor, I want the bus compressor. And remove some of the low frequencies from the side chain signal mix some more of the wet signal in, so again we're using a parallel compression technique here. Speed up, rather slow down the attack time, and speed up the release, and pull down the threshold a bit more. So there you go, a basic drum sound. Thanks for watching.